Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Here's my top 10 favorite Mel Gibson movies. Yes, Mel Gibson is a great actor and a great director, but I think we all could admit he's gone down a little bit of a slope in the past decade or so. We all know why, because of his personal life and stuff, but I think a lot of people can admit that Mel Gibson is a great movie star, and he's made a lot of fantastic movies, and he's got a new movie coming out. Yes, he did have a movie earlier this year, but... He's directing and producing a movie that's coming out next week called Hacksaw Ridge. It looks looks fantastic, and I'm really excited to see it. really excited to see that movie, and I'm here to celebrate that movie by giving my top ten favorite Mel Gibson movies. All right, let's get to it. Here's my top ten favorite Mel Gibson movies, and before top ten list, you got you gotta have your honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are Get the Gringo, The Beaver, We Were Soldiers, What Women Want, Payback, The Bounty. And Gallipoli, all great movies. Just give me the top 10 list, but Damien, my top 10 was my number 10. My number 10 is the movie The Man Without a Face. The Man Without a Face is so good. This movie's directed by Mel Gibson, and it stars Mel Gibson, and it's a fantastic story about a man who looks a little different, and people call him a freak and all that stuff, and basically it's about this younger kid who finds them, and they become these very unlikely friends, and it's very enjoyable. This kid learns a lot from this guy, even though he is a deformed person, but he learns so much from him, and this beautiful friendship spawns throughout this movie, and it's such a well-written film. The dialogue in this movie, and how these characters are written, and even portrayed, is absolutely fantastic. If you have not seen this movie yet, please check it out. It's a very heartwarming and even heartbreaking film. It has great performances, especially by Mel Gibson, and his direction is absolutely solid throughout this whole entire movie. It's fantastic. The Man with No Face is a fantastic movie. Check it out. Coming number nine is the movie The Patriot. The Patriot is probably the only movie I like that's directed by Roland Emmerich. I can't stand Roland Emmerich. I think he's a god-awful director. He did movies like Stargate, Godzilla, White House Down, and uh, this year's Independence Day, Independence Day, the first one. I can't stand Roland Emmerich. I think he's the, I think he's a god-awful filmmaker. But this movie is his best movie. It's his only good movie, and it's very solid. I feel like he didn't direct this movie. I felt like this was directed by Mel Gibson. Just Roland Emmerich put his name on it or something. I don't know. This movie's great. Mel Gibson is fantastic in this movie. Jason Isaacs is fantastic. Heath Ledger's really good. It's a very good story. It's a, definitely a movie that's like America, fuck yeah kind of movie, and it's great. It's a great war movie. The action sequences are just epic. Cinematography is fantastic, the editing is great, and it's entertaining from start to finish. It, does it have flaws? Yes, it does, has many, but it's still a very enjoyable film. Coming number eight is Maverick. Yes, Maverick. I love westerns, and I love comedic westerns. We don't get a lot of those. Yes, we we got Blazing Saddles and Shanghai Noon and Maverick, but we need more comedic westerns. This one is definitely one of the funniest comedic western movies of all time. So good. Directed by Richard Donner. Did a fantastic job. Mel Gibson's in this movie. James Garner. Jodie Foster. Uh, what's his name? Alfred Molina. He's in this movie. He's great. The cameo of Danny Glover is so freaking funny. One of my favorite cameos. It's got great action, but it's also got a lot of solid comedy. And everyone's fantastic. And it's just a great Western feel. And if you love Westerns, you'll love this movie. And if you love comedies, you will definitely love this movie. It's definitely one of my favorites. Coming number seven is Lethal Weapon 2. Yes, it's just been revoked. If you want to see an awesome, badass action sequel, and you want to see Danny Glover on a toilet with a bomb, then watch this movie. Lethal Weapon 2 is fantastic. Richard Donner returns as the director. Fantastic. He directed all these movies, and he just did a solid job with every one of them, especially Lethal Weapon 2. This movie could have easily failed because Shane Black didn't come back to write the movie, but it's still really well done. The writing's good. The acting is top-notch. Martin Riggs, played by Mel Gibson, is just such a, a great, enjoyable, crazy character. Him and, and Murtaugh, played by Danny Glover, is fantastic. The chemistry is just spot on. This movie introduces us to Joe Pesci. I, I get I get I get, I get, I get, So good. This, this movie has great action, great comedy, and it's just an all-around solid movie. Mm. Coming to number six is The Year of Living Dangerously. This movie, again, so freaking good. This movie could have been Mel Gibson's Oscar nomination for acting. He is amazing this movie. I'm not going to spoil anything. All I got to say is, if you want to really watch an emotional impact of a film, a really hard-hitting drama, a great character study, please 
check it out. Mel Gibson is almost damn near perfect in this movie. He's fantastic. I was going to put Glippley on it because I loved him in that movie so much as well, but this movie, he is absolutely amazing. He's not Mel Gibson. He transformed himself into the role in this movie. He's fantastic. The movie's great. It's got a great, powerful story. Amazing, amazing scenes in this movie. Some of them are damn near hard to watch, but they're just so well done. It's a very realistic feeling movie, and it's so good. It's it's even at times thrilling. It's engaging. It's entertaining. It's amazingly well done. Very well constructed. Well structured film. Such a good movie. Please check it out if you have not seen it. It's a very underrated film. Coming number five is Bloodfather. Bloodfather is a movie actually I just reviewed just a month ago, so I'll leave a link down below. I reviewed the whole movie. This movie's fantastic. It's a great father-daughter story. It's also a great action dramatic thriller. I love Mel Gibson. This is Mel Gibson's comeback role. Who knows, Hacksaw Ridge might bring him back even higher because I heard that movie was amazing and it looks amazing, but Bloodfather is so good. I love Mel Gibson. I love William H. Macy. It's a great gritty action movie and it's just an awesome movie. It just shows us that, once again, Mel Gibson can play amazing action roles. Coming number four is the Mad Max Trilogy. Yes, I just put them all on there, even Beyond Thunderdome, even though it's not a great movie. I still enjoy it, though. Uh, Mad Max, uh, Road Warrior, and Beyond Thunderdome. This is what began Mel Gibson's career uh, in Mad Max. Mad Max is such a great movie directed by George Miller. George Miller directed all these movies so well, especially Fury Road last year. Oh, it's such an amazing action movie. But Mad Max is just a great cult classic film. Great action films, great science fiction films, great post-apocalyptic films, dystopian era films, and I just love it. Mel Gibson's fantastic. He'll always be Mad Max to me, but he'll also be William Wallace and Martin Riggs as well. But yeah, this is just another franchise he did that was just iconic and amazing, and mostly due to George Miller and Mel Gibson. Coming to number three is Ransom. Ransom, directed by Ron Howard, and I loved this movie. This is definitely the most underrated Ron Howard, mo Howard movie. Probably my favorite Ron Howard movie. And that says a lot, because I love Rush and Apollo 13 and stuff, and A Beautiful Mind. This movie is amazing. I love the story. It's a kidnapping story about a man whose son gets kidnapped by all these people and stuff, and you think it'd be just this generic story, kind of like Taken and stuff, but no. It's different. This character is so freaking smart. Yes, Mel Gibson's character. He's such a smart, clever character because he's a businessman. So basically, when his son gets kidnapped, instead of paying the people the $2 million to get his son back, he goes on live news and offers a bounty on all of them. He offers whoever, whoever can find my son and kill the people who kidnapped my son and bring my son back, I'll give you the $2 million instead of the people who kidnapped my son. That is such an interesting idea, and it, and it works, in a way, in a way. I won't spoil the movie, but this movie is so freaking good. Ron Howard's direction is fantastic, but the acting in this movie, and this movie is so thrilling and so engaging. Mel Gibson's amazing, Rene Russo, Gary Sinise, uh, who else is in this movie? Delroy Lindo, everyone's great. Also, Johnny Wahlberg, Leif Schreiber, Leo, Lily Taylor, everyone's fantastic in this movie. This movie is so underrated. More people need to watch this movie. It's a great Ron Howard movie, and it's one of my favorite Mel Gibson movies. Coming number two is Lethal Weapon, the first Lethal Weapon. Of course, it takes place during the Christmas season because it's a Shane Black movie. It was written by Shane Black, directed by Richard Donner. Amazing team up. That's why this movie was amazing. I think all of the Lethal Weapon movies could have been perfect if just Shane Black wrote all of them and Richard Donner directed them all, but apparently that was too hard, I guess. But Shane Black wrote a... Uh, other great movies throughout the 90s and stuff, you know, like Last Action Hero, The Monster Squad, but this movie, Lethal Weapon, I find it amazing. It's so freaking good. I love Mel Gibson and Danny Glover in this movie. They're both amazing. The way this movie opens with, you know, the Christmas song, and then just begins with a girl that's naked and jump, jumping off a building. Like, that's the tone of this movie. It's happy, then it's dark. Then it's happy, then it's dark. It's a gr great action thriller comedy. It's so freaking good. Gary Busey's in this movie. He's good. <laughs> Everyone's great in this movie. Great villains, great heroes. It's just an interesting, fascinating story. And the story of Martin Riggs, played by Mel Gibson, is a fascinating story about how he wants to commit suicide and stuff. And basically, his partner, Danny Glover, is what saves him. And it's just a, it's just a beautiful story, beautiful friendship, and an amazing action movie. It's one of my favorite action movies of all time. And it's my second favorite Mel Gibson movie. It's just amazing. And my number one favorite Mel Gibson movie is 
Braveheart, yes, because they may take our land, but they'll never take our freedom! Yes, freedom! Uh, this was a toss-up. Lethal Weapon or Braveheart, I couldn't decide. Braveheart. Braveheart is a little dash better than Lethal Weapon. They're both 10 out of 10 movies, but Braveheart is so good. It won in this Academy Award. He won two, actually, for directing and producing. He also plays the lead role, William Wallace, in such a great character, such an iconic movie. One of the best best picture winners at the Oscars. This movie's so good. It's an inspirational story. It's an emotional story. It's got great action, amazing cinematography, amazing production and costumes and makeup. I love all these characters. I love the story. It's a definitely one of the most inspirational war movies of all time. I freaking love it. It is the best Mel Gibson movie ever. And Hacksaw Ridge better come close to being as good as Braveheart. Some people are saying it's better than Braveheart. We shall see in a week or so. But until then, Braveheart is my number one favorite Mel Gibson movie. So yeah, that was my top 10 favorite Mel Gibson movies. So in the comment section below, please tell me, did you agree with this list? If not, give me your top 10 favorite Mel Gibson movies. Comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.